Good evening. It's great to be here together in the Lord's house on this weekend of the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Today we begin uh, three weeks in a row where we focus on miracles of Jesus. Tonight we focus on the feeding of the 5,000 and see the good news that uh, Jesus continues to provide for us both body and soul. And so that will be our focus as we worship together this evening. Our worship will begin with our opening hymn number 573. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. He spread a cloud for a covering. And fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quail. And gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river. For he remembered his holy promise. And Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy. His chosen ones with singing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and will be forever. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. with you and also with you let us pray heavenly father though we do not deserve your goodness still you provide for all our needs of body and soul grant us your holy spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts give thanks for all your benefits and serve you in willing obedience through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, 
my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them and from their race according to the flesh, the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the, world, the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages to buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 642.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we look at the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Today's account refreshes our hearts with the wonderful truth that God most certainly provides. So today we're going to look deeper into the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 and put ourselves into this account. And as we do that, we'll see how this text applies to us today as Christians. And so in this account of the feeding of the 5,000, we not only sit with the crowds and receive the wonderful gifts of Jesus, we also stand with Jesus, like the disciples, as givers. Jesus told his small group of disciples who came to them and came to him and told him that it was a desolate place, the day was over, he needed to send the crowds away to get something to eat. But what did Jesus tell that small group of disciples? He said, you give them something to eat. That's how our Lord works. That's how he continues to work even today. It calls to mind John 21, where Jesus says to Peter, you feed my lamb. You feed my sheep. There's an important difference there, though, for not all are called to be pastors as Jesus was training his disciples to be. But you have all been called by Jesus into the priesthood of the baptized, the priesthood of all believers. He has given each and every one of you places to serve in all the vocations that he's given you to live out whether that be in your families, as friends, as workers, as neighbors, in your church family, and so much more. In those roles, you stand with Jesus for those around you in this world. And what has Jesus told you to do? Well, actually, it's quite simple. Just as simply as Jesus told the twelve, they're hungry, you give them something to eat. They're in need. You help them. Love them. Love all people. No matter how much they get on your nerves. Love your neighbor. Love even your enemies. Ask where you can help. Do good to all people. Be compassionate. Be caring. Be humble. And above all, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. You know, last week we heard Pastor Sippy speak about how the best sermons are the ones that we live out in the world as we let the fruit of the Spirit flow through us, through our service to our neighbors in need. And so in Matthew 14, we see this play out as Jesus tells his disciples to give the people something to eat. And Jesus takes what they bring him, the meager five loaves and two fish, and he makes it enough, more than enough. But what do we tend to say when Jesus tells us, you go give them something to eat, you go help? We tend to respond the same way the disciples did. Their words right after Jesus said, you go give them something to eat, were we have only. We have only. When our lives are premised with that kind of attitude of we have only, we tend to find ourselves peering over at our neighbors, seeing how much more they have than we do. There never seems to be enough. We're never satisfied. The glass always seems to be half empty. We live with chronic anxiety, greed, and stinginess with what God has given us. Have you been caught seeing your life, seeing your circumstances the way the disciples did? Saying, we have only? We all have. We say it about our personal lives, uh, our possessions, the things going on in our lives. We have only. We say it together as a church family as well. In my 10 years here at Grace, I've heard it said, and I've even sinfully said it myself. 
we have only. But in all those situations, all those times where we say we have only, what we fail to see is that what we have is God. We have the God of the entire universe. We have the God of abundance. And we've been given his sure and certain promises that together as a church family, he's given us everything that we need, both body and soul. We can trust. We can trust that as we faithfully give back to God of our time, talent, and treasures, that he will make something bountiful out of it. Something that not only will be a blessing to us, but will be a blessing to our whole summit community. We can trust God's promise to provide because we see his compassion for his people. God is an ever-giving God in his compassion. We see that in our text this evening. In our text, Jesus had just learned about the death of John the Baptist. And he wanted to go to, out to a desolate place by himself as he was grieving the death of his very own flesh and blood cousin. Instead, the crowds had heard where Jesus was going and they gathered there to meet him. So Jesus didn't get that time alone. But his reaction to the people coming and, and joining him there was not one of anger. He wasn't irritated with the people. Instead, what do we hear? We hear that Jesus had compassion on the crowd that had gathered. He healed them. He taught them. He didn't send them away in their need, but he had them stay with him, knowing that he had everything that they needed for body and soul. That very same love and compassion of Jesus is also shown to us today through Holy Communion. Though this text in Matthew 14 isn't necessarily about the Lord's Supper, it certainly parallels that. Jesus took the bread, looked up to heaven, gave thanks, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples who gave it to everyone who gathered. And everyone ate and was satisfied. And certainly, like I said, those actions parallel Holy Communion, where the Lord says to us, take, eat. Another miracle that we partake of here. He feeds us with forgiveness. He changes our hearts. He gives us new and abundant life the promise of the Holy Spirit, all gifts found in the giving of himself to us. And just as everyone was satisfied with the meal in the miracle in our gospel lesson, so also in this holy meal of Holy Communion, everybody is satisfied. We're satisfied because of the promise that whoever eats of Jesus' body and drinks of his blood will live forever, has the forgiveness of sins. When Jesus feeds us with himself, we are more than conquerors in every situation that we face in life. Because Jesus is the bread which sustains us eternally, we are convinced that when life throws something bad at us, when we're dealing with these difficult times that are all around us, when death is coming close in our lives, whatever it is, even when we seem to be so overwhelmed, we know that nothing that we face will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Christ is with us, and so we should never see any situation as being hopeless, but rather hopeful. You know, even when the crowd, all they had was a meager fish and bread, God, with that meager offering, fed 5,000 men plus women and children. Matthew 6, 31 through 33 says, Don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. You see, when we bring our meager gifts to God, our ordinary gifts and talents, when we bring the simplicity of who we are to God, he does mighty miracles through our lives. So often, though, we have this mindset that there are certain things that we just can't do for God. We may think to ourselves, 
You know, who am I to tell others the good news that I hear in church every Sunday? We may think like Moses did, that we're not good enough speakers to tell others about Jesus. But whatever the reasons may be, in this story of the feeding of the 5,000, we see that wonderful news that God can work through anything. God can use you and me. He can use us despite all our inadequacies, and he can work miracles. And we often ask, you know, where is God's action in my life? And the answer to that question is that God's action is all around us. And God's action also comes through us. Remember, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. You and I are often the means to help others. Our hands are the hands of God. Our mouths are to share the word of God. The same God who has placed all the resources in our hands will continue to do so. And so with that in mind, may the Holy Spirit enable and equip each of us to see the reality of God's miraculous work all around us. Because of the saving work of Jesus Christ who laid down his life to give us abundant life, we have all that we need for both body and soul. May the Holy Spirit enable us to live in the reality of God's abundance and enable us every day to say we are satisfied. Amen. At this time, please stand as we confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, you have bidden us to come with money to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer, confident of your promise to hear and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that our hearts may be turned to your word, that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, and that we may discern truth from error. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we too quickly focus on what we lack and not upon your unlimited grace. Bless all relief agencies and services of your church on behalf of the hungry, the homeless, the hurting, and those who have lost hope. Bless those visited by disaster and tragedy, and open our hearts to help them recover from their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we are daily blessed to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies who serve us in government and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, the Congress, our governor, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we suffer 
with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant us and grant to us healing according to your will, strength in time of trial and peace at the last. We pray especially for Jean Heitman, Carol Bean, Joe Graziano, Chris Thompson, Mitch Seaman, Ralph Waymeyer, Coulter Doherty, Ramona Prater, Debbie Heitman, Jana Anderson, Brandon Hall, and those named in our hearts. Good Lord, deliver us and teach us to depend upon your grace in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we know that your steadfast love and mercy are forever, but our faith is daily tested and tempted. Give us strength and endurance that we may not despair but have confidence in your sufficient grace. Guide us to seek your consolation in your word and sacraments and prepare us to receive the Lord's body and blood in this holy communion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we are daily and richly surrounded with your love and care. Grant us eyes to see your mercies new every morning and grateful hearts that we have that what we have received we may share with those in need and generously support the work of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to grant us all things needful and to keep from us all things harmful to us and to our salvation, for we trust in your wisdom and your love. Teach us to pray without fear, your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we ask you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. joyful lips 
Please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, number 602. Sorry. 
wonderful blessing it is to know that God continues to give us his gifts and not only gives us the gifts but equips us to go and give those gifts to others to our neighbors and those in need uh, we pray the Holy Spirit equip us to be his people who go and 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 feed his his people with his love and grace and so um, a few quick announcements uh, there, as you leave, there's the offering plates, and next to the offering plates are, is a little thing, uh, Grace News, and it has some announcements and, and things that go along with the, the readings and everything for today. Um, please make sure to check that out. A couple things that I'll um, highlight uh, is we're looking for anyone who still has Thrive and Action teams to use. There's a number of different things we want to uh, accomplish with those around church. And so if you're interested, uh, please talk to me and, and uh, we'll get you pointed in the right direction on that. Um, Wednesdays, we continue to do our Zoom Bible studies at 10 in the morning and 7 at night. Anyone is welcome. Um, we also got a new uh, church email address. Uh, it is graceholtsummitmo at gmail.com. Uh, the grace to you this past Wednesday was sent out through that email address and we'll continue to send out everything through that. Um, it didn't go out quite as fast as we were expecting, and so uh, bear with me on that. We're going to try to get that uh, issue fixed and have everything being able to send, send out in a timely manner uh, with that. But just to warn you, we have a new email address. Um, and so the rest of the announcements, uh, make sure to check out in the Grace News as you leave. Uh, with uh, one other announcement. All right, we can't go wrong with this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's truly a blessing to be able to serve here at Grace and blessed with such a wonderful uh, church family. And so thank God uh, for that. And so thank you. And, and uh, with that, uh, have a great night in the Lord.